Rodgers looking for Devontae Adams. He's got it. DJ Moore has a pass to the end zone. Jonathan Taylor, touchdown. Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotoviz Overtime and Rotoviz Radio, brought to you by Blue Wire. My name is Colin Kelly. You can follow me on Twitter at Overtime Ireland. And as always, I am joined by Sean Siegel of Rotoviz.com, one of the co-owners and of course the co-host of both the Rotoviz Overtime podcast and the Stealing Bananas podcast, along with Ben Gretsch. Sean, we talked a lot last week about the playoffs, what could happen, what might happen. Some of the stuff we predicted did happen. Some of the stuff we <laughs> predicted did not happen. And obviously uh, a win for your Kansas City Chiefs in an absolutely incredible game. One of, I think, one of the all-time playoff and one of the all-time NFL classics in terms of how that one played out. And then obviously my Packers uh, slipping up, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, not not a, a stellar performance there. And they are eliminated at the hands of the, the 49ers. We'll touch on it a little bit more as we go through the show i talked to you over the, the last couple of days i'm starting to to come around a little bit and i have a, a story i'll share in a moment about my my daughter's uh you know her condolences that she gave to me after the the game ended but a really uh interesting weekend if you weren't a packers fan or you weren't on the the end of uh, one of the losing teams outcomes this past weekend um i think it was a, an absolutely phenomenal weekend it's hard to know in situations like this sometimes if it's better to <laughs> to be in you know the bill situation the packers situation i'm pretty sure at the end of it all it, it feels the exact same whether you played amazingly or played bad but uh, four teams remain and um, we're in for a an enthralling weekend as we will find out this coming weekend who, who progresses to the super bowl so sean as a chiefs fan it had to be a, a pretty a pretty exciting sunday night it was it was and I, the game was just really pretty unfathomable right the different twists and turns and you know we'll get into a little bit more of the details in the show and during the week but you had the nfl's number one scoring defense on the other side you had the team that actually had been the number one scoring defense from mid-season on so you're talking about two defenses that in a completely different context we'd be discussing the defensive strengths of these teams and through the two minute warning the defenses had actually played extremely well and then you get to that point and you see the two best quarterbacks in the nfl take over and just i mean these are two of the very best quarterback performances of all time and obviously for bills fans and for josh allen it's just unfortunate that you were against Patrick Mahomes and you look at Mahomes and one of the things that almost got them in trouble early in the season when a few little things were going wrong is that I mean, he's just such a fierce competitor, which I can sometimes get lost within the context of him being the biggest talent to ever play the quarterback position in the NFL. But he's also just this fearsome competitor and in the first half of the season that manifested in trying to do too much on a handful of occasions but you also see and the thing that we've seen now with them making four consecutive afc championship games is that he has this sense of calm within the ability to make plays that are impossible and to compete as though he's the nfl's best competitor so you put all of those things together and you have this game where he does will the Chiefs to victory pass the Chiefs to victory within the context of Josh Allen playing one of the all-time great games. And so I think it was the best game in NFL history. Now, there are a lot of other games that are close, and, and certainly there are at least a handful of Super Bowls that you would say maybe compete. I don't know if any of those games, you obviously have championship games, Super Bowl games that have come down to the end, that have gone to overtime, those types of things. I don't know that any of those games were actually between two teams of this caliber and were played at this level. Now, a lot of people are going to push back on that and say, I mean, (laughs) these two teams are not even the top seed in the AFC. You know, those are some things we can go over during the week as well, why that happened. 
Uh, just a quick note, you go back look and look through, and Gabriel Davis barely played when the Bills lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars 9-6. to And so, you know, I think if you're a Bills fan, you look at this and say to yourself, we lost the championship in the 2021 slash, you know, now 2022 season because of the acquisition of Emmanuel Sanders. And if we hadn't done that, we would have had the path to the number one C. We would have played these games at home. And with how good we are, we would have won, right? And so there are some little things like that, that when all-time great 49ers team, an all-time great Cowboys team, an all-time great Steelers team, you know, obviously some of those teams, and you can even put some of the Patriots teams in there. I don't know if they were all-time great teams, but lots of teams that won Super Bowl that are going to say, you know, we were just convincingly better than these Chiefs and Bills teams that were in this game. But at the time that the game was played, and you look over the second half of the NFL season, you look at the defense, you look at the quarterbacks, and these these are two of the best teams ever, right? And, you know, you have the overtime rules. I think when you look at this, and again, the defense has played really well, and this is the setup of the game. And if the Chiefs don't score a touchdown, I mean, there's huge pressure on the Chiefs to score a touchdown there because if they don't, they're going to lose, right? Yeah. And so there's still plenty of pressure in the other direction. Uh, from the Chiefs' perspective, if they win the coin flip four years ago against the Patriots, then they're saying, well, we've won two of the last three Super Bowls and you know we're being looked at as now in the conversation as being the greatest dynasty of all time. And so, you know, that part of it can work either way. But yeah, uh, this this was a game that uh, we're not going to see anything like this for a long time. Yeah, no, I would agree. And, you know, when you look at some of those games and the overtime rules have, you know, there's been, I'm sure Ben Ben has had some fun discussions on the overtime rules on Twitter. So maybe that's more of a stadium bananas conversation, but I've just kind of stayed clear of it and maybe that's because i didn't want to talk football for a few days after the Packers lost and maybe it's uh, just that you know we've been down that road before but there is no perfect way really to set the things up in overtime but like you mentioned the way this game was going if the chiefs don't get in there then the the, the bills only need a field goal and you know the way they were playing that was likely the scenario as well uh, what i would say is sometimes we see these classic games where one team gets out ahead and other teams charging back you could even say you know, the way that the, the Rams and Buccaneers game went on Sunday. But this game, just looking at the box score, so first quarter, 7-7, seven, seven, second quarter, seven points scored, eight scored, 14-14 at halftime. Third quarter, nine points scored by the Chiefs, seven by the Bills. So we're in a situation then that we have a two-point lead heading into the fourth quarter for the, the Chiefs. And then we have 13 points for the Chiefs and 15 points for the Bills. And that doesn't even take into consideration how these points were scored and you know how things worked out for the bills taking the lead and then how the you know field goal was set up you know with 13 seconds left for the the chiefs just so many things in it and so it was kind of blow for blow but it wasn't a case where it was you know low score and fight it out there's not many games where i've seen where it's been as equal throughout and it's just you know we're going to score now we're going to score now we're going to score and the way it was uh, done a lot of interesting scenarios around it the the big question sean i guess coming out of it there was some fun comments coming in on the the youtube channel for the the road of his videos from last week one of the questions that did come in was is gabriel davis now the 101 in dynasty so uh, obviously a little bit tongue-in-cheek there but we were very much uh you know big you know believers in davis heading into his second season in the league had a very solid rookie year had josh allen there you mentioned emmanuel sanders probably a bit harsh to say that you know <laughs> signing emmanuel sanders was the sole reason that they didn't win the, the super bowl but you could say that around the the number one seed but you know things might balance out a little bit but in this one eight for 201 and four touchdowns i believe i seen he is the first wide receiver to have four touchdowns in a playoff game i, I might have read that wrong but that was something that I, I seen over the last couple of days and he just had a, a major major day but the concern then is is we talked about, about Stefan Diggs last week and you know Diggs then with a, a very very you know I don't know what we want to you know three for seven on the day we can't really say a huge amount about it but what's your thoughts on how the Bills like you kind of touched on it have used Davis firstly in the second season and then how much you know do we factor that into to heading forward into his third year in the league 
Yeah, I mean, this is the guy that they completely marginalized from the offense over the first half of the season, and the offense struggled, and everybody's talking about, okay, well, these new defenses and the wrinkles that the defenses are putting in as they evolve to deal with quarterbacks like Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes are stopping these teams. And what we've seen from that point is that the, those offensive play callers and schemers have been able to bounce back in a big way and you know good luck stopping Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen but the Bills while they should get a ton of credit for finally moving in the right direction because you can be stubborn and never go that way you could also argue that their internal evaluations really hurt them this season because one thing you do see here is that having this home playoff game matters now one of the things that was kind of bizarre about this weekend it is probably the best playoff weekend that we've had when you consider that all four games come down to the final play all eight teams involved very good teams some of the losing teams just fantastic i mean the tennessee titans had a great season they hammered the chiefs 27 to 3 earlier in the year they went through this big stretch where they weren't you know as dynamic because they didn't have derrick henry they didn't have aj brown they didn't have julio jones but a very very good team for them to go out is something that's hard, obviously, for their fans. And we know that Joe Burrow and the Bengals are on a real run here. Obviously hard for the Packers to go out. Difficult for, in some ways, the Buccaneers to, to go out. I don't think the outside of Tampa Bay people are probably lamenting that too much. But the way that they came back again at the end, it shows you how difficult it is to put Tom Brady and company out of a playoff. So just this incredible weekend, right? And three of the four games are won by the road team. But even as that happened, there were some big individual plays where you could see the value of home field. And three of the four road teams were able to overcome that, but they had to overcome it by making some incredible plays. By, on the one hand, having Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup, and the Rams are the most talented team in the NFC whether or not they're the best team is a different story. They've had a lot of trouble executing a lot of things despite their talent. But, you know, a fantastically talented team that, again, was not the number one seed. They do get in this fortunate situation now where they get to host the NFC championship game. But you have the Titans. One of the reasons the Titans almost advance is because they get all of these sacks, right? And that probably doesn't happen if home field is swapped. And certainly if you're a Bills fan, I think that you would argue that you win that game against the Chiefs if you're playing at home. And so you can't just kind of play through the regular season and, you know, whatever happens, happens. You've got to be winning these games from the beginning. The Bills simply cannot take that long to get to Devin Singletary as they're running back. And he's put up extremely good numbers in the advanced stats that we have for you in the advanced stats tool over the past couple of years. That's one of the reasons why he was on the zero RB candidates list. It was one of the reasons why he was on our preseason article talking about five running backs who were stealth awesome last year. And then again, I mean, he comes out, Corbin Young had a great series on advanced running back stats throughout the year in his final article, you know, again, talking about Devin Singletary and the, the great season that he had. When you have that kind of guy, I mean, it can't take you until the last month to really use him. And then, the situation with Gabriel Davis even more egregious there. I think we talked three weeks ago that the emergence of Isaiah McKenzie and their final willingness to play Gabriel Davis is the situation where now with those guys and Stephon Diggs and then Dawson Knox and Devin Singletary, you have this almost unstoppable offense. Whereas when you're trying to use Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley, people are like, you know, fine, we'll, we'll take away Stephon Diggs. We're not worried about Sanders and Beasley beating us. And again, all of that played out, Gabriel Davis, you know, obviously not the 101 in Dynasty, but someone who was a very important piece going forward now, as teams have to look at the pick your poison between Diggs and Davis, that's going to be a little bit of a decision. And Davis, somebody we really liked coming out of college, he had some of these, uh, he really hit in some of our favorite metrics Then he goes to the Bills. He has this rookie season where, again, that we just see so many parallels between what he was doing for the Bills and what the second and third receivers have done so, through so many years with the Packers, where you've got the star, but then the quarterback is so good that that number two, especially if he's a good red zone threat, can have these huge touchdown numbers. That's what it looked like Gabriel Davis was going to be this season. But then the offseason kind of rolls around, training camp rolls around, all the reports out of Buffalo are that Emmanuel Sanders is going to be the guy. 
And I mean, from a playing time perspective, that's exactly how it played out, right? And so, you know, you, you have to balance a little bit some of those picks in best ball. We had some Sanders. We had a lot of Gabriel Davis in these 28 round drafts. You know, even with how little he played in the first half of the season, that still panned out nicely. But yeah, I think that part of it, again, you only get so many chances. Now, the great thing here with the Chiefs and the Bills and whatever happens this weekend with the Bengals is that those three teams are going to feel like they have this championship window that extends for the next decade. But even within that, and you know, you have to take things one day at a time. You can't kind of sit back and say, oh, if we don't win this game, then 10 years from now, I'm not going to look like Tom Brady. The chances that anybody is going to look like Tom Brady from a total playoff wins and Super Bowl wins perspective, when you look at how the quarterbacks are distributed right now, if we had sort of half on the NFC side, half on the AFC side, it would be a different story. But you're now looking at a battle between Allen and Mahomes and Burrow and you know potentially Lamar Jackson. There are going to be some other individual teams that rise up during that time period that are like the Tennessee Titans. You have some other good teams in the AFC. So your chances of doing what the Patriots did are going to be very, very small. And so you're probably not going to be in that kind of Brady conversation anyway, but you're only going to get so many chances, even when you have the 10, 12, 13 years, however long these guys can play. But then also certainly for someone like a Patrick Mahomes, if, I mean, he seems like the guy who really does have the shot because number one, he's already off to a good start and that's crucial. And then number two, probably the best quarterback to ever play. We'll see over the next five to 10 years, if you really can start to make inroads on people like Peyton Manning, like a Drew Brees, like an Aaron Rodgers. Uh, in, in many ways, he's already been so good in the postseason that Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees are going to be in the rear view from that perspective pretty shortly. But yeah, you, you just only have so many chances. And so for the Bills to have not taken advantage of this, that's hard even when you know, okay, the future is pretty bright. Yeah, I agree 100%. You mentioned a couple of interesting things there. The first one I don't want to forget, I want to mention is you mentioned Carbon Young and his series on the website throughout the season. Carbon had a, a fantastic season and is nominated for an FSWA uh, Best Football Ongoing Series Award, which is a, a massive piece of recognition for him. So simply uh, awesome stuff from him and uh, congratulations on the nomination too. Corbin has been great. And just also a, a quick little note, uh, when he said a little thank you, which again... Just a, a really cool thing there. Corbin's a great guy. He's doing awesome work for us. Excited to see what he does going forward. He mentioned getting to work with Blair and what a great job that Blair Andrews does as an editor. You know, If you're a, an aspiring fantasy football writer, if you're a listener to the show, you like what we do at Rotoviz, and you, know, you feel comfortable and excited by the way that we look at fantasy, then you know, give us a shout. Let us know. I have uh, several listeners who are in all likelihood going to start up working with us over the next month or so. I've got some meetings this week on that. And yeah, just a big perk if you're someone who does kind of have that fantasy football writing itch is that you get to work with Blair. And obviously we talk about Blair a lot on the show. Uh, the possibility or the chance to work with Blair Andrews is one that I would definitely jump out. So let us know if you have some interest in writing for the site. Obviously we can't necessarily take everyone but you know if you send us a good sample if you are familiar with what we do here at rv we'd love to have you we have new people who break out all the time including you know sometimes to our detriment as as connor <laughs> shows this year. so it's been a great year for the young writers fantastic stuff by carbon and we will look through some stuff <clears throat> Yes, super writing team, Blair, obviously super at what he does in an exciting, exciting year coming up, uh, an exciting future for Rotoviz in general. So reach out if that is something of interest. Sean, you had on a couple of other things there. You mentioned like, you know, we, we touched on Davis. You also touched on Singletary a little bit. It took them a little bit of time to figure out the balance for Spills team. And like you mentioned earlier and hinted at it, maybe just cost them the number one seed because that one win against the, the Jags earlier in the season might have changed things around but we talked about Allen we talked about Mahomes you know both what these guys done in terms of through the air and on the ground is incredible in this game both uh both of them over 65 yards rushing both of them over 300 
and 20 yards passing four touchdowns for Allen, three touchdowns for Mahomes. I don't know if this, like you, you said, possibly the best game in NFL history. I don't know when we'll see this matched again, but absolutely terrific stuff from both of them. And um, the other thing you mentioned was the window closing on some of these teams are in 10 years who, like, we can't be comparing it to Tom Brady, but the window does shut. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers got to one Super Bowl. We'll see if he's back next year. Probably unlikely, but looks like it'll be a one Super Bowl run for him. We'll see what happens with the Seahawks and Russell Wilson. They get to the Super Bowl as a very young quarterback for Wilson, and then they get back and lose it the second time. One Super Bowl win for them, two appearances. And then we go to Mahomes is already nearly at that point. If he wins this weekend, they'll have two appearances and one Super Bowl and potentially two Super Bowls at that point. So I think you're you're... The thing we should say is nobody's ever going to match Brady. I don't know if we'll ever see anyone even have the longevity to have a chance. And then his record year on year was so incredible that I think that's just a record that no, no, there's no point in chasing that one, I don't think. So um, just amazing to see these young guys come up. The Bengals, obviously the, the team that are going to face off against your Chiefs this week. We have loved watching the Bengals all season long, you know, um, We've been rooting for them all year long, hoping things would work out. We we love the young wide receivers. We love Joe Burrow. It felt like, you know, maybe this one would be a step too far. I did mention last week, though, I wanted them to be aggressive. And obviously, Burrow getting sacked nine times, um, you know, it, it looked like it might not work out for them. But they, they continued to push on, and they, they did get the win at the end. A massive win for the Bengals, you know, in terms of their recent history, one of the biggest results they've had in, in a long, long time. And, um, I think for what we were hoping for in the AFC side, it was going to be that the Bengals get to the AFC Championship and they face the, for you, obviously, the Chiefs or the Bills. Um, I think that's a perfect scenario on that side. Um, but the Bengals, again, stepping up and, and being such a young offense all around, really exciting stuff. I did want to mention as well, in terms of the Bengals, uh, Jamar Chase has been you know the the shine and light this season for what he's done uh, bjorn has a fantastic piece up on the site looking at how close his rookie season is to that of julio jones so we know julio had a a massive run and he's obviously unfortunately he lost on that titan side but he had a couple of big plays this past week for the titans but the bengals sean we've been on them talking about them all season long i would say those times where listeners maybe thought that we were talking about the bengals too much this past off season but I thought there was a high score in offense there. Didn't really believe there was an AFC championship contender, but uh, they have they have got there in the end. They have. And like so many of the teams from this past weekend, a good balance between offense and defense. They were able to slow both the Raiders and the Titans. Now, you're not necessarily thinking of those teams as being explosive teams, but those teams have quarterbacks who are probably a little bit underrated at this point. They do have some weapons with the Raiders getting Waller back, with the Titans getting multiple pieces back. And we've watched the Bengals slow opponents and to be very solid on defense, even if they don't necessarily come with you know, this ferocious type of defense that we've seen you know, with Super Bowl champions who relied on defense in the past, which is good because it's been fun to see so many teams be so balanced. I think that for, you know, a decade or two decades there, we had teams in the postseason that either had these ultra high scoring offenses or they had defenses that were you know ranked at the very top of the scoring and just were shutout defenses. And those created interesting contrasts of style in playoff games, but they didn't necessarily create actual good games, right? And to have teams now where they can beat you in multiple ways, the Bengals had to hold the Titans down because of all those sacks. They weren't scoring a ton. They weren't able to get in the end zone. You always worry when you kick all of those field goals that it will come back to haunt you, but they were able to come through. And they got balanced performances from Jamar Chase and T. Higgins in this one. They got a little bit from Joe Mixon. One of the things we know about their offense is that it can, in theory, beat you in a lot of ways. They have the three elite receivers. They have a running back who you know, probably is kind of on that top end of just a guy, but a hybrid type of player. You know, Mixon can get the yards that are blocked. He will occasionally make a big play for you. He's got good agility in the hole. He can be a solid receiver. And so a good complement to what they have with the rest of the team one of the things that we have seen with Jamar Chase, and we saw again in this game, is just that that speed 
is such a difference maker. And you look at some of the problems that the Bills had down the stretch in the game against the Chiefs there, and Tyreek Hill takes the long touchdown. You know, that doesn't happen every week, obviously, but it's hard to stop when you've got a guy with 4 2 speed there. Because of that, that opens up Travis Kelsey for the play that, you know, Bills fans will kind of be replaying in their heads forever where they give up the yardage to get into the field goal range at the end. The Bengals do this exact same thing. And now we're into this AFC championship game where Kansas City has to figure out on defense. And it will be, I mean, I think everybody is hoping mostly from the perspective of brain health that Tyron Matthew is able to come out and play in this game. If he's not, then, I mean, the Chiefs are going to have trouble on the back end again. I mean, they actually played a very good game against the Bills until those last couple of possessions where the breakdowns came fast and furious. We've already seen now that the Chiefs have given up a 50-point game to Jamar Chase, a 50-point game to Gabriel Davis. You don't even necessarily have to be a fantasy player to know that, well, I mean, that means that they gave up a historically monstrous game, right? And Jamar Chase has that speed. Now, it's not 4-2 speed like Hill, but when you're in the low 4-3s, you can accelerate away from the defense on any given play, even when the defense, in theory, has you covered with the angles, you know, the guy could escape. And so they're going to need some big plays like that to beat the Chiefs, especially in Arrowhead. They're going to have to come up with a way to deal with the pass rush. I mean, Kansas City is going to have to get some sacks as well, right? You've got to get the margin. You've got to hold them down and not let them get the ball to these playmaking receivers. But I don't think you could ask for anything more than to have an AFC championship game with Burrow Mahomes, an AFC championship game with Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase. That's kind of the dream matchup. Yeah, and Hill looked pretty healthy this past week as well. It's good after the concerns around him a couple of weeks back. The interesting thing about both these games is they are very recent rematches. You talked about the Chase game from a couple of weeks ago. That was kind of in the the playoff finals of fantasy leagues. And then we had the game a couple of weeks back where the uh, 49ers roar back to beat the Rams. So both of those teams facing off this week, and it's going to be very interesting to see how things uh, balance out. I'm sure supporters of both teams will be saying positives and negatives for both sides of, of those battles, but um, I think it's going to be interesting. I mentioned uh, the Packers. We've skipped over them so far pretty much all the show. Uh, myself and Sean had been messaging back and forth this week a few times uh, to see how I was kind of getting on with the the result, but um seems to be uh, I, I was using denial, I think, most of the week to, to get by, but it's starting to, to ease out now. Um, you know with how things have gone over the weekend very disappointing obviously as a Packers fan I said I, I thought that it was Super Bowl or disappointment the thing is only one team's going to win the Super Bowl and um, the Packers though special teams kind of got them in the end the offense didn't really perform amazingly they really performed on that first drive um, when AJ Dillon scored the touchdown Dillon then got injured in special teams a little bit later in the game and I think they kind of lost rhythm at that point so the, the fumble as well and the, the second drive obviously turned things around so disappointing all around but you know these things happen we'll we'll move on but i wanted to share a, a story of uh, how my my nearly four-year-old daughter uh, took to the results so she came to me on, on sunday morning i was kind of tired she said what's wrong i said uh, daddy's team lost and she said ha ha my team won <laughs> so not even knowing what sport it was what it was but um her team won and uh, that's all that mattered to her so that really uh, kind of took me back to earth and uh, was a, a fun moment that I, i'll remember for quite some time but yeah kids will kids will put you back in your place pretty soon when you're kind of thinking this this game uh, my team lost and they're like doesn't matter um you know i need you to help me with something else here right now i need to play with my dinosaurs <laughs> or something to that effect so um that was uh, it but we'll leave that probably for the packers side of things but sean the the other game was the the Rams and Bills game we touched on cup there we'll do in terms of it felt like it was you know oh this is Tom Brady and this is what happens in Tom Brady games where Tom Brady comes all the way back and wins it, it looked like this game was out of sight for quite some time and then we had multiple turnovers fumbles different things happening and Brady and the Bucks tie it up and then the massive play to, to cup and um, to set up the field goal obviously a, a, another huge day and a, an incredible season from cup and you know the packers and the lions are obviously rivals and uh, you know matthew stafford was with the lions for a long long time but it's very hard not to like stafford what he's done in his career and you know what he's been through and uh, that was a pretty cool moment for him but 
another incredible game. Sunday might have been the best back to back playoff standalone kind of island games that there there has been. You mentioned already one of them being, but like I've seen people saying like that Bucks Rams game was one of the best you know games that they had seen in a long time, and then like you know within four hours that's just a rest. <laughs> Yeah, and this game wasn't nearly as well played, right? And probably between two teams that aren't nearly as good. But it was cool to see Matthew Stafford play so well. If you would know that the Rams had a big lead and then because of turnovers and mistakes that the Buccaneers came roaring back, then you would probably assume that at least to an extent Matthew Stafford was a culprit, but that was not the case, right? The mistakes came from a lot of other players you liked to see the Rams stick with Cam Akers after he commits the huge fumble early. And yet, maybe unfortunately with that, he then commits a huge fumble late. And so all of these coaches who are like, yeah, you got you to gotta show the guy that you mean business. You got to put him on the bench. You got to teach him a lesson. All those coaches are going to be like, see, you know, they went back to him and he just fumbled again. So it, are they the same people who say you shouldn't go for it and force down, or are they different people? Probably, probably people who don't like fun. So we're not, you know, we're not too worried about them, I think. But yeah, I mean, you have the fumble from Cup, which is something you're not necessarily expecting from him. So a lot of mistakes on the Rams side that let a pretty overmatched Buccaneers team kind of dig back into it. Yes, it was a super weekend of games, and if it is to be Brady's last run at it, it's going to be, you know, and we'll see what happens with Rodgers as well. There's going to be a lot of names around the NFL over the last kind of two years. You know, you're looking at Breeze, potentially Rodgers and Brady, and then into Roethlisberger and, and all those guys that may be um, at the end of the road, maybe hanging up their, their, all their cleats, I guess. And uh, you mentioned it, and I mentioned it at the start of the show, a lot of those young quarterbacks that are now atop the AFC in particular – um, in terms of challenges for future Super Bowls and current Super Bowls, of course. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how all that plays out. As always, as we get to the end of the show, I want to let you know that you can get a 10% listeners-only discount to a road of his NFL pass. All you have to do is add the code RVRADIO2022 at checkout, get you access to all of our content and tools up on the website. And that is you know, uh, it's something I would highly recommend as we head into this offseason. Uh, the Rookie Guide will also be coming out very, very shortly. We'll talk more about that on Thursday's show with Sean and the guys had a summit this week to talk through some of the rankings and such that will be in that. You can head on over and check out the Road of His YouTube channel as well. We'll be posting some of these videos up there. You can see myself and Sean uh, talking through the episodes there as well give it a subscribe we would really appreciate that as we look to grow that presence on video over this off season that will, link will be in the show's description until we are back with thursday show thank you for checking out this one hopefully you are uh, enjoying the content we have if you have any questions you want to submit to you know have us look into over the rest of the off season we'll have time to dive into some uh, more off-season topics starting up now in the next week or two send them my way you can send it at rotovizradio at gmail.com or you can dm it or tweet it to me at overtime ireland you can also follow me on twitter at overtime ireland and of course you can check all of sean's work up on rotoviz.com and with that all that's left to say is until we're back on thursday with another show have a good one Thank you for listening to Overtime on Road of His Radio. Please rate and review the Road of His Radio podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. You can contact us via email at roadofhisradio at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Road of His Radio. And remember, you can always support the pod by subscribing to Road of His for the discount through the Road of His Radio homepage, roadofhis.com forward slash podcast.